Hi, I'm Matt Kazee with Surrey County Beekeepers. I'm here with Davey Simpson, also with Surrey County Beekeepers. Uh, we're actually out in our bee yard out here today doing some uh, mite treatments and we were talking and uh, there's a lot of questions that we get fairly frequently. And one of them is about uh, bee aggression. And we've experienced that quite a bit here yesterday and today. And uh, and we were talking about why we thought that they were being so aggressive. So, Davey, what, what, what do you think, you know, brought that on? So, yeah, I get this question a lot, you know, around this time of year. Why, why are my bees um, so aggressive? Are they queenless? Um, is, is it Africanized bees? You know, and, and the answer is, no, you're probably not queenless. And no, they're not Africanized bees. It's August and beekeeping. Um, it, it's just like you or I. Uh, if if we're hungry and hot, we're ill. So you're uh, saying they're hangry? Yeah, they're hangry. Uh, they need a Snickers bar. <laughs> um, you got to look at your beekeeping year. Uh, when you when you're going into um, February, you've got a small uh, um, cluster of bees. You know, and and the pollen starts coming in, and that starts growing, and then some nectar starts coming in about uh, uh, end of April, into May. You know, just little dribs and drabs here, and everything is uh, hunky dory. It's you know, it's not real hot. Uh, there's plenty of forage out there. Uh, the queens are laying good. Um, everything is is perfect with the world. The mite counts are low. Hive beetle. Please excuse the traffic in the background. Absolutely. Uh, the small hive beetle numbers are low. All of the pressures are are pretty much non-existent or very low. And all of the forage is there for the bees. You get around the middle of July in this area. Uh, it may be totally different for your area. But uh, right after the sourwood flow here, everything leaves. There, there's very little pollen out there. Uh, there's virtually no nectar. And that's when the time when your mite count starts creeping up, you start seeing numbers of small hive beetles. And then you add a beekeeper into the equation. And that's kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back. And the bees just take all their aggression out on the beekeepers when they pop that lid. Um, there's really no good way to fix it except suit up you know uh, when we're keeping bees in uh, February and March and April a veil you know at the very most a jacket absolutely no gloves uh, but this time of year it's long pants jacket gloves hood smoke uh, you, you pull out all the stops in, in, in August especially so you gotta be patient with the bees. These past few days, I've been stung through my gloves. Uh, I've been stung through my pants. I've probably taken about 30 stings the past couple days. Uh, but of course, we're doing stuff that isn't just a quick in and out type thing. You know, we're doing some things out here treating these bees, and and uh, so we're we're creating a situation that makes us prone to get stung to begin with. And then Absolutely. you add on all the stuff you just talked right. about and it's just a rep recipe for disaster so you want to be careful this time of year you know and you got to remember your colonies are really big right now and you got you know a lot of adult bees a lot of the older bees and those are the ones that want to get you typically yeah. you know so you, there's a lot more of those this time of year so you know your big hives they tend to be more aggressive just because they have more guard bees well and, and another one that i left out you know if there's no forage out there uh Typically, those forged bees are back at the hive. Are are they're all unemployed? Yep. Um, they're 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 at home. And um, then they say, "Hey, look, a beekeeper, something to do." Right. <laughs> yep. So uh, they they employ those stingers. Um, and, and I'm with Matt. You know, in the past couple of days, I've I've carried my fair share of, of stings. Uh, but as a beekeeper, that's just that's that's part of the job. And and you just you carry on. You try to minimize the. Um, disruptions and the banging and the, uh, the beating, um, uh, the 
the short end of it is beekeeping in August uh, can be tough. Yeah, it's not fun like it is in the spring. It's not fun like it is in the spring. Um, there's but, there's but seasons to it. But also on, on the other side of that, August is the most important Absolutely. Um, month in the year to, to keep bees, uh, that the beekeeper should be beekeeping. In their hive. Right. Uh, controlling varroa mites, making sure uh, their nutrition is, this is good. This, this is where you start preparing your bees for that, the winter that's right. right now. Right. Um, your beekeeping ca calendar year starts in August. What you do now is going to affect your bees in the spring. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and if they even make it to the spring, right. you know, um, August is the month um, to get your bees uh, varroa mites checked, um, the nutrition um, where it needs to be, and uh, all that. But yeah, at no. This, at this point, you know, you, you've gone through a dearth. Uh, you're getting ready to come out of it. In our area, we've got goldenrod that's just started blooming, yeah. so we should start having some nectar coming in from it. Uh, so we're hoping that that bee doesn't sting me, but then we're also hoping that, uh, that you know, there's a good flow coming in, so we have to feed less. Now, this time of year, you can still get by with one-to-one because -one, there's still oh, time to draw it for them to, yeah. to, to dry it out. Uh, you get much past this into September in this area, Late September, you kind of want to switch to two to one uh, for your feeding. But right now, you know, you can get that one to one in there and and still uh, start your preps. If you have a hive that has absolutely no honey in it or nothing right now, you'd want to go ahead and start. You know, I would probably feed one to one through the month of September. Um, typically, uh, around here, and again, this is all different uh, depending on where you live. But typically around here, uh, October is usually a pretty warm month as well. Yeah, it is. Um, so I would I would feed one to one through the month of, of October, just strictly for the fact of I would want to continue to stimulate that queen right. uh, to lay, and a one to one you ratio get a nice build up of those winter bees. Right, um, will keep that queen stimulated to lay as long as you possibly can. So. That's a good question. Thanks for asking. But we'll, uh, you know, that I think that pretty much covers, you know, some of the reasons why your hive might be aggressive. Now, there's a, there's other reasons why your hive might be aggressive. Uh, it could be that at nighttime they're getting pestered by possums or coons or, or even bears, you know, and they're just kind of on the defensive. And you don't necessarily know that's happening unless you, you know, see some of the indicators of that. So there's other things that can play into it. We obviously, we, we could never stand here and cover every reason why bees are aggressive. Absolutely. There's just too many. And, and could they be queenless? Absolutely. Oh yeah, they, I mean, they, they, could they be. very well could. It could be. Um, but my first indication of a hot hive in August would not be a, a right. queen failure. Yeah, you kind of expect hive. them to be hot yeah. in this this time of year. Yeah. And I wouldn't really think queenless until I got into the hive and actually had right. you know some physical indicators of that. Right. Just aggression alone wouldn't be enough. Absolutely. Well, hey, um, thanks for watching the video. Uh, if you like the channel, please subscribe. Click the uh, little bell icon to get notifications every time we share a video. And uh, also, you share the video so we can get uh, this uh, content out and uh, to uh, other folks. We thank you for watching.